Entrevistas Alfa Hola, yo soy Cristina Tenorio, estamos con una mujer muy talentosa, con diferentes facetas, diferentes géneros y que tenemos la oportunidad de que esté desde Londres aquí con nosotros, Riva Taylor, how are you? Hi, I'm really good, thank you, thanks for having me. I was saying in Spanish a word that I know that you like that is different because it, it really describes you. Like you're different, like you don't have like any kind of boundaries. You mm. always explore new sounds. So I was looking to your uh, to your biography and everything, and it was like always exploring. Mm -hmm. And I'm a really stalker, so I get into your playlist. I was really surprised to, that you have from Peter Gabriel, Jesse Ware, Miley Cyrus. How is the life of a sound seeker? How do you find inspiration? Yeah, thanks so much. That's a really nice observation. Um, As a writer, I'm always looking for inspiration and influences and, you know, whatever comes my way, um, I will uh, I will try to cr create using those influences. So, you know, this latest body of work, the latest album is very much um, uh, been created because of influence from what I'm seeing. It's all about me looking outwards. Um, Whereas, you know, inspirations come from anywhere. The last album before, uh, written during the pandemic, was inspired by those moments, those very isolated moments. Um, so I think if you listen to my, my personal playlist um, online, you can really hear quite a stark difference um, between, you know, my, my musical um, outputs because uh, I think they've just come to me at different moments in time. So, you know, this is a moment where the world is open again, we're feeling very free and I'm able to travel. I'm a bit of a mus musical nomad and that's where I get my inspiration yes. from, the places I go, the people I meet, the things I see. Um, and in particular, this new music is all about the Latin rhythms and being inspired by that and creating around uh, that soundscape. I I really agree with what you're saying, and I mean you. I like that you celebrate as a song of yours. You celebrate every feeling, every moment, like the good times and the bad times. I really love that about you, and that you are into music from long, long, long ago. Like, uh, I mean, you say this in in a lot of interviews, but it's really important that you signed when you were very young. Mm -hmm. Was that um, like a bad pressure to you in any kind of time in your life to create music because you had to create something? Yeah, interesting. I am um, well. Going to your point of of influences from everywhere, and, and you mentioned Peter Gabriel. You know, I grew up as a kid listening to Peter Gabriel. I was very lucky to have parents that played a lot of music around the house, so I was listening to everything from like Peter Gabriel, Dire Straits, uh, to you know modern pop music of of the time, like big female power ballad singers, Whitney Houston. They've all shaped who I am, um, but I've definitely um, moved uh, through through the years um, and, and, and departed from the music that I first put out when I was first signed as a little girl, which I think is what you just mentioned. Um, so yeah, I've been constantly learning, but, uh, but yeah, interestingly with this latest music, I've done full circle because I wanted to come back to my, my core, back to my roots, and that was It was jazz music. It was classic jazz music that first got me signed when I was 12 years old. And I had a realization. It was actually born out of the pandemic when, you know, we all had that moment to sit and, and reflect that I wanted to go back and, and do a little more of the stuff that I had started doing mm -hmm. that, that, that sparked my interest and in, in made me fall in love with the idea of being a performer. So that's where we started on this route. It actually started with jazz music, jazz chords, And from that, we shifted into Latin jazz. Yeah. And then this is the music you now hear. It's like a really interesting journey, as I was saying, and you're saying too, because, uh, for example, uh, as you're saying, you wanted to explore like the like the old you, like the, the roots in you, but also new sounds like Colors of Blue is just amazing. Like to me, like ev every blue in the song is like, you know, like uh, like different layers, like heartbroken, but sexy, but naive with love. So uh, about this, what was the most challenging in studio to you, like to go back with the strings that are beautiful and the jazz and the new sounds? Mm. What was the most challenging thing in studio for uh, when recording Colors of Blue? Thank you for digging into that because you're dissecting the music, which not everybody does. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really nice. Um, the challenging thing with Colors of Blue I think was was actually um, 
how do I put it, was, was having enough edge because the music that I'd released before, you know, we had, it was sitting nicely in what we call, I don't like to put things in boxes and genres and whatever, but in the pop space. Um, and there were certain songs like Celebrate, which is one of my favourites from the last record, um, where I think, where I deeply connect with, with the sound. And I wanted to bring that sound into this new jazz world. Yeah. So I think if you listen to Celebrate, you can hear similarities. It's actually produced or part produced by the same producer, which helps. Um, but that was the biggest challenge, I think, trying to merge the worlds of jazz and my slightly more classic um, training, if you call it that, and, and background, and the edge that we had also come to be. And also lyrically do that because Colours of Blue, what I really enjoy about it, it's not just a surface level song, really. <laughs> it's it's quite complex and it is it's adult. Yeah. Um it's it's about things that, you know, I wouldn't have sung about when I was in my teens <laughs> because I've now had experience and it's about, you know, observing people who have flings on holiday <laughs> and like and and transient love that love can be that it doesn't have to be really deep love can be permanent or, or it can be you know of a moment of a holiday um and, and i actually started writing colors of blue when i was in in, in ibiza and, and okay. we were listening to i was listening to this rhythm and i saw this couple and they were falling in love <laughs> but they'd probably only known each other <laughs> for a day and i thought how funny because you're the stranger that i love they're a complete stranger until we get so close then we know a little bit too much about each other we're not interested then it becomes really uncomfortable these yeah. are adult <laughs> feelings that we all have until we find full love so um that was what colors of blue is all about you're a very good storyteller <laughs> by the way really good storyteller so uh, i gotta say that i was working and i was um just listening to your music planning this interview and then i heard to eh, solo quiere me mm. and i stopped typing and i just wanted to cry that that's Aww. a beautiful song so thank you what came first to you? Like the emotion, the music, the words? Mm. It's a beautiful song. Solo Quierame was a, actually a really easy one to write. Really? Yeah. Um, interestingly, though, we didn't have Solo Quierame to start with. <laughs> and we didn't quite have a song there. And, and it was really missing something. It was just, just love me, just love me. Um, I can remember I was sat in my home studio and and my producer actually sent over, which this is somehow sometimes how we write, you know, if I'm just needing a bit of inspiration. He just sent me a nice guitar riff and mm -hmm. I started singing over it. And we had mostly what you hear now um, that, that night uh, when I wrote it, but we didn't have the solo key enemy. So it started with, with the guitar. It started with that lovely sort of lilty Spanish uh, guitar and um and and then the lyric just followed and then solo quiero me came at the very end because i was like just love me just love me you what, ask what google is, or and you i was ask like what is just like love me in spanish so solo quiero me and i was like and it rhymes and, yeah <laughs> it's a perfect um so yeah it's a beautiful song because uh like the guitar feels like i didn't know if, if i wanted to deconstruct the song i didn't know what came first but because the emotion is like so powerful but mm. also the music so it's a really beautiful song Riva and then thank you I was listening to you singing in Spanish and then uh, you know Cubano that we played in in Alpha at 1.3 a lot and people yeah. ask for that it, it's to me like when we in Mexico we, we speak Spanish of course but when we go to a, con a concert it's like a barrier like uh, the language you know when we yeah. have we have to sing in English or any other language mm. but now it's you the vulnerable on stage you know, yeah. like not not uh, speaking 100% another language. How do you feel? And the proudest thing of having Cubano. Yeah. So so the um, how do I feel? Do I feel vulnerable on the stage, not being able to speak? No, no, no. I mean, like, it's is it like weird and fun? Like now you are the one that doesn't know like a full 100% oh. the, the, the yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I wish I did. It's. Um, <laughs> I'm hard on myself sometimes about things like this because I've been learning, but it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not fully confident. <laughs> I'm too critical of myself to even try, but um, hopefully next time when, when I'm here talking to you, I'll be able to say a little more in Spanish. Um, but yeah, no, it's a totally, I mean, I, I never really thought I would be here amazingly mm -hmm. when we started writing 
the songs and and the first collaboration which was with Irvin River you know he's full he sang fully in Spanish um I didn't necessarily think it would take me here I was just sort of going with my heart and what felt right so it's been it's an incredible feeling to to be standing here and not only standing here um you know, in in Mexico City, but for the second time in in the very Mm -hmm. short space of time to be able to come back and talk to you and and see the response, it it feels incredible. So I'm excited for for what's next. What I hear from the audience, from, from, you know, the radio uh, people, is that they acknowledge that you taught, that that you had this risk and an adventure of speaking in another language and getting this collaboration that maybe would be like the weirdest thing that you could not imagine to yourself like years ago but now we are grateful that you took the the risk and did it because it's a beautiful outcome like cubano it's beautiful thank and, you um we were talking before we started the interview that you're mo- more mexican than me now because you tried yesterday black pastor a black pastor i know so i know <laughs> I, l- I love that if you could describe <laughs> this is a weird and maybe silly question but if you could describe cubano as a taco <laughs> how would you describe it um it's spicy it's um colorful so it's got all of the ingredients <laughs> in it um do, do you want a specific taco yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's it's got a little bit of the uh, it's got a, it's a chicken taco okay, okay it's, it's a, a chicken, chicken taco <laughs> with um with lots of colorful vegetables Cubano, I like it. Yeah. I like it. So, Riva, uh, before we end this interview, another question. I know that you're a fan f- of Muse and a lot of artists, but if you could pick any artist from any genre to make a cover of one of your songs, not <gasps> not Cubano, I mean any other song, Colors of Blue, who would you choose? You've just mentioned someone who I would go for, and it's Muse. I love Matt Bellamy's voice. In fact, a few people have have said to me, because I've got a lot of range in my voice, and in the journey of making music and stuff, it's actually brought some challenges, because sometimes you don't explore your whole capacity as a vocalist, and sometimes it's positioned as as too classical or whatever, and it's like, actually, a classical vocalist who is genreless who is undeniable is Matt Bellamy yeah, he's perfect. just in- incredible and um, I would love to see them especially a male vocal on one of my tracks um, and given a real epic dynamic approach to it I would love to hit that maybe we can make this viral so Matt Bellamy maybe. can sing colors are you blue. listening Matt? <laughs> so Riva thank you uh, can we have a sneak peek of what's coming next like the next mm. record absolutely yeah I mean I can't give away too much for the yeah. next record um, but the next single is is being finished off in the studio as we speak and uh, yeah got the album coming out next year so that's really exciting to be building into that well I hope to have you here uh, next year for next talk thank you for your time thanks so and much. we're going to keep playing your music in our radio thank station. you thank Riva you Taylor en Alfa 91.3 donde todo nace entrevistas Alfa